to set up for a game of keep, we'll create a supply of tokens, divide it out into segments of ones, fives, and tens, and set those in a common play area off to the side. You will then take the character cards, we will shuffle these up, and you'll deal three to each player. So we'll go ahead and deal those out. In this case, we're gonna, for the purposes of this video, we're gonna do a two player setup. Each player will then look at the three characters they were dealt and will choose one of these characters to add face down to their play area, also known as the cloister. And that's very important to know. So we have a blacksmith, we've got a master thief, and we've got a constable. So you're gonna take one of these characters, you're gonna play it face down in your cloister, and this will become your play area where you will play other characters and items that will be used to score points or coins as the game progresses. The other two characters will simply be returned to the face down deck in order to be shuffled later. So we'll have this character select one, placing it face down in their cloister. We then take all of the unused character cards as well as the ones that were not selected we place them back into the deck with all of the item cards, and this deck is then shuffled to create a draw deck off to the center of the table. Once that is done, each player will be given two bonus action markers, and these are prototype components, these are not final. So each player will get two bonus action markers, so we'll give uh, one to each player there. And then you will select one player and give them the Royal Decree. Again, this is a stand-in component, the Royal Decree token that you will use in Keep, and your actual version of Keep will look much different. So we're gonna make this player down here, give them the Royal Decree. The Royal Decree lets you decide, oh, when you have the Royal Decree, you can choose to go first or last for the turn. You will then, once the deck is shuffled, we will then deal a hand of eight cards to each player. That is eight cards. Your hand is kept secret from your opponent, as in most games. And now that we are set up with a hand of eight cards, a face down character in our cloister, our supply, our two bonus action tokens, and the royal decree marker selected, we have to fill out now the common area. The commons is filled face up with two cards plus one card for each player in the game. So in the example of this two player game, we're going to have four cards in the commons. The commons can be made, be made up of a combination of items and character cards as the game goes on. We are now ready to begin play. On a player's turn, they must select one character or one item card to play. The card they're selecting to play can come from their hand, so we could choose a card from our hand and play it, or we could choose to play a card from the common area. Let's look at the options available to a player on their turn. When playing a character, there are four ways you could play a character. You can choose to take a character from your hand, so in this case we could play either the gardener or the blacksmith from our hand. If we choose one of these characters to play, there are two ways we can play this. If we play the gardener, we could choose to play this card face up on the table and activate its ability. This would allow us to add a produce card to our cloister from our hand and then sell a produce card and then we're able to draw an additional card. Selling a produce card would allow us to take a card that says produce on it, sell it by discarding it, and we would gain three coins for each card that we sell in that manner. So that is one way we can play the gardener. We play this face up, we take that action, and then the gardener would go to the discard pile along with the produce card that we sold. We could also choose to play the gardener face down in our cloister and just add her as an additional uh, an additional scoring mechanism at the end of the game. Adding the gardener to the cloister means that at the end of the game, this scoring objective here of scoring two coins for each produce card in the cloister becomes active for the gardener. And then there is a way that we can activate this gardener from, uh, from within the cloister. So we're gonna go and play her face down in the cloister. The other ways you can play a character would be to select a character from the, uh, from the commons area. So for example, if this blacksmith was in the commons area, we could select to play that blacksmith, again, either for its ability or its end game scoring condition. So if we picked the blacksmith up, played it for its ability, it would get discarded. We then have to take a card from our hand and replace that empty space with a card from our hand that does not match the character that we took, so we could not put another blacksmith down. We'll then take two coins from the supply and place it on the card that we just played. That is, those are the options for playing a character card. 
there are two ways to play an item. Items can either be played from your hand or from the common area. Items at all times are played in your cloister face up. So we could take a look at our second player over here. Let's take a look at the character that they chose. They chose the Covetous Smith. So this lets, if we were to activate this ability, they, we would get to add an Ironworks card uh, from another player's cloister to our, to our cloister. And at the end of the game, if this character is, um, we're gonna score five coins if no player has more Ironworks cards in their cloister than we do. So we have this character card to work with. And we can look at the, the cards in our hand and we could play an Ironworks card. Again, just from our hand, we place it face up in our cloister and that would conclude our turn. The other way you could play an item is just like we did with the characters, we could choose to take an item out of the commons, play it face up, and then replace it with an item from our hand, again placing two coins from the supply onto the card that we just placed into the commons. On a player's turn, before playing a card, that player can spend one of their bonus action tokens, flip a character card in their cloister face up, and activate that character's ability. So for example, this player could discard one of their action tokens, flip a character face up, and activate the ability. This character still st still remains in the cloister for that player, so that their in-game scoring condition is there. However, they've obviously revealed that in-game scoring condition to their opponent. So in this case, we flip up the gardener, and the gardener says to add one produce card to your cloister from your hand, sell a produce card, and draw a card. So we can activate that. We have a produce card in hand, so we'll add that produce card to our cloister. We'll then sell a produce card, which just gets discarded, giving us three coins, or essentially three end game points now get added. And then we have to draw a card to add back to our hand per the instructions on the gardener. And of course the gardener remains here in our cloister, so at the end of the game, we will get two coins for each produce card still in the cloister. Once all players have taken their turn, we check for game end. The game will end if at any time one player has zero cards in their hand. In this case, both players still have cards in their hand, so the game will continue. Ending the round, we look at our commons. Any, co any cards that have coins on them get discarded. Those coins get returned to the supply. So in this case, these two cards would get discarded. We then place a coin on all the cards remaining in the commons, and then we refill the supply from the deck. The Royal Decree passes one player to the left, and play continues with the player with the Royal Decree determining if they would like to go first or last. If this player chooses to go first, they will take their turn as normal playing either an item or a character card from hand or from the commons. If, however, they choose to go last, the player to their left would become the first player for the round, and play would proceed clockwise around the table, ending with the player with the royal decree. Play will continue until, at the end of a round, one player has no cards in hand. At that point, we will move to end-game scoring. End-game scoring is a two-step process. We've reached the end of the game, and this player has no cards left in their hand. The player down here has one but it doesn't matter. This card simply gets discarded and set aside for in-game scoring. For in-game scoring, each player is going to flip all of their character cards face up, and then we'll resolve scoring abilities on those characters first. So for our player down here, we have the constable. The constable says one coin for each other character card in your, clo in your cloister. So we have three other characters, so we're going to get three coins from the supply for the scoring objective of our constable. We then look at the gardener. The gardener says two coins for each produce card in your cloister. We have two produce cards, so we're going to get four coins from the supply for our gardener. The harlequin says three coins if no player has more character cards in their cloister than you do. This player has a total of four character cards. Their opponent has three, so they are going to gain the bonus of three coins from the Harlequin character as well. So we'll give three more coins to this player. And then finally, we come to the Alchemist. The Alchemist scoring is two coins for each potion card in your cloister. And we have two potions cards for a total of four more points. 
looking at the other players' scoring objectives, first we have the Covetous Smith, who gets five coins if no player has more Ironworks cards in their cloister than you do. We have three Ironworks cards over here, none here, so we do score five points for having the most Ironworks cards. Next we have the Baker, who scores two coins for each Delicacy card in the cloister. We have three Delicacies for six points. And then finally, the Farmhand, who's worth a coin, and this says this card counts as one produce card at the end of the game, which doesn't matter for the end of our scoring, however he is worth a coin. Once you have totaled the scoring objectives from your characters, the next thing to do is total up how many coins each item in your cloister is worth. We have two potions and two produce, each worth a coin apiece, and nothing else, so we're going to get four coins down here for this player, for the items in their cloister, so we'll give them four coins here. And over here we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 coins. So we'll just give a 10 and drop one over here for this player. Players will then total up points and the player with the most points wins. In the case of a tie, the player with the most cards in their cloister wins. And if players are still tied, those tied players will share the victory.